Another brief concept that's touched on section 3.1 is the double negative. So what happens if you have something like this in a problem? Say you have 3 minus a negative 8, or you have 14 minus a negative 3. What happens when you have a minus a negative? Well, that double negative is going to end up very simply being a positive. Okay, so double negative, that's just going to equal a positive 8. And this will be a positive 3. So why is that? So I'd like to just take a minute to explain the concept behind this. And there's, there's a couple different ways you can look at it. Um, and I'm going to try to touch on both of them. So when we're looking at integers, our starting point is always 0. Okay, so we're going to start at 0. And then the sign tells us which direction to go. So since it's a negative, we know we're going to go to the left. Another way to look at these negative signs means it's a change in direction. So what's the natural direction to go on the number line? The natural direction to go on the number line is to the right. We always count up. That's when we teach our kids to count. We go one, two, three. We start with the zero and, and we work our way to the right on the number line. That's our natural way. So this negative sign actually means we're changing the natural direction. So instead of going our natural way to the right, what we're going to do is switch and go to the left. Okay, so our first sign says, nope, change, go to the left. But then our next sign is a change sign too. So it says, oh, oh nope, we're changing again and we're going back the other way. There's only two ways you can go on this number line. You can go to the right or to the left. So the double negative says, Okay, we're changing from natural direction to go to the negative. And then the second sign says, nope, nope, we're changing again, and we're going back. So our starting point is zero, but these two signs are telling us what direction to go. And since it's a double negative, we're changing direction twice, which just puts, it, puts us back into going in that natural direction toward the right again. So that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is, I'm use a different color here you could write it as a negative one times a negative eight, and then a negative one times a negative three. Because really, there's that invisible one. That invisible one's gonna pop up a lot. It's gonna be sprinkled here throughout this class and the next class, this invisible one. And one of the rules and in integers um, that you'll see later on in this chapter is if you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. So a negative one times a negative eight would equal a positive eight. A negative one times a negative three would equal a positive three. So that's another way to look at these double negatives. So either looking at it as the change sign and how um, you're moving on the number line, or instead of it just having a negative all by itself floating out there, it's a negative one and you're multiplying it by whatever's in the parentheses.